Hi, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Talk Thursday. Today we speak with Marikina's Second District Representative and Liberal Party spokesman Miro Kimbo. Welcome to Talk Thursday. Thank you. Thank you um, for having me. Well, can I start with the raging issue of the day? It was just announced by UNA today. UNA dropped the three common candidates uh, from their slate today. Is this unexpected? Is this what LP wanted to happen all along? Well, we we, we can't. I can't deny it. We find that uh, to be good news, but uh, it's not at all unexpected. We saw it as an inevitable conclusion because we've always uh, said, and and Una's always known that they are the three candidates are candidates of Team Pinoy, and in fact were only adopted by Una to be able to complete their slate. They only have nine candidates at this point, and. Uh, it wouldn't look good if you don't have a full slate. It's always a perception of weakness. And uh, seemingly, that, that's the situation today. But uh, yeah, we, we absolutely welcome. And you know, the, the good thing about it is that it now makes these elections clear. Right. Because the three candidates being shared, or at least uh, having the perception of being shared, muddled the debate. Because it is now difficult to stand on two separate platforms where you had three candidates who would be straddling between those uh, two platforms. Now it makes it really uh, the debate clear. Well, that's interesting about uh, the, the two political parties. Um, there have been questions about what is the difference between these two political parties. How, what is the difference? That's, the, the, that's the, always the folly of Philippine politics. Uh, for the longest time, I think that We've had a very personality-oriented uh, uh, politics. It's not simply because of the weakness of the political system, meaning we have weak political parties. Those are all given. Yes. But for the longest time, except in uh, the first senatorial elections after the 86 Constitution, we've never had a campaign that is really aligned with a particular theme or message. Right. And the, I think the biggest difference now is not just in terms of, of message, but in terms of methodology is we live and buy under one single mantra, and that's we treat these elections really as a referendum on the president. Mm -hmm. We look at it, and it's, it's never happened. You've never seen a president that puts his two and a half years on the line, some say unnecessarily, but the president needs to be able to get that uh, affirmation and to get the necessary support to hammer out difficult laws which are forthcoming. We've seen over the last two years that while Congress has been dramatic in coming up with laws that have heretofore not been available. I mean, Correct. we talk about sin taxes. Yes. That never passes, uh, goes beyond committee hearings. Talk about uh, reproductive health. Law. Yes. You talk about uh, amendments to anti-money laundering. All, I mean, all these things and hosts of other laws. We've managed to do that. Mm -hmm. And the bottleneck often has really been in the Senate. Not all the time. And it's not to blame them. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's the nature of having... A, a partisan or too many parties in, in the Senate. And the President thinks that there are many things that he still needs to do. And in particular, the closest one being is, is a framework, uh, a law that will carry out the framework in, in the Muslim Bangsa peace process. Yes. And that cannot be forestalled. And you know, you have issues about Saba. And the President thinks that and believes that we need to be able to carry these difficult things uh, in the next three years. But what's interesting is you talked about trying to move beyond personality politics, but then again, you're anchoring Team Pinoy. LP is still anchored on President Aquino. What are the what platform? Is there any distinct platform that Team Pinoy will stand for that Una does not? The the it is called Team Pinoy, and in fact, it is it is a a person's name. It yes. is the president's name. But unlike any other president, for that matter, the president speaks volumes in carrying out a particular agenda. And that's uh, governance, right. meaning accountability. It's human capital investments, meaning investing in, in our people. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, reforming the entire investment infrastructure to make the country more, more attractive. I mean, those are the three things that really the president wants to focus on. And first, of course, you know, on transparency. Yes. That's what we keep on talking about, tuwid na daan, meaning uh, that has been the hallmark. I mean. You, to be able to bring in investments, the president believes that we need to be able to uh, be seen through a, a clear glass panel. We should not be willing to hide behind opaque uh, glass doors. And that, that has been the, the root of the success. And many of the reforms, in fact, has been towards that. And yes. there are a number of laws that need to be passed. Uh, money laundering, you talk about the witness protection reform. Uh, these are the different areas where we need fundamental legislative reform, meaning laws, 
uh, in order to, to carry that out. Or even in human, human capital uh, uh, investment, you're talking about CCT. Yes. You're talking about building classrooms. Mm -hmm. The, the, for the first time this year, the country is actually going to be able to plug the, the long-standing uh, backlog on classrooms. It's never happened. And people, when people ask how it has happened, people realize, don't realize that the reason why we are going to be able to build 68,000 classrooms this year is because the investors are confident in this president. I don't want to get into the, the details of how it actually takes place, yeah. but investors are actually willing to put in money and get paid over a 10-year period without certainty if they will actually get paid because the amortization is going to be annual through Congress. So you, you, well, you're basically saying if you like what the president has accomplished so far, vote for Team Pinoy. Absolutely. Um, you, you, that, that is the absolute single question that we want voters to think about. Can you just set the record straight again? Another news item that came out is a crack between LP and NPC. What is the story? Set it straight for the record. What's going well, on? Well, the, the Team Pinoy is not just a liberal party. It's a coalition of several parties, including NPC, the Nationalista Party, the NP, the LDP, as well as Akbayan. No coalition is, it will always be problem-free. And obviously, this is one area. There are issues on the, on the local level where you have competing members of Congress, competing yes. uh, mayors, competing governors, where some friction will arise. But as a whole, the party, NPC, has already spoken through its officials that there is no truth to that. As far as we are concerned, their commitment to the president and to the coalition is not only for these elections, but in fact, up until the end of the term of the president. The NPC is a vital partner of, of the Liberal Party and Team Pinoy. They're a vital partner. They're the second biggest party in Congress today. They're a very cohesive group. We would not have been able to carry out many of the strong or controversial votes in Congress, the impeachment of the Ombudsman, the mm -hmm. Chief Justice, mm -hmm. Syntaxes, mm -hmm. RH. There are a host of other uh, 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 laws that were, were passed because of NPC. And I think if the partnership, since the partnership is not really based on personalities, mm -hmm. it's not based on commitments, it's based on a particular set of principles that we've all imbibed, it will last. It will last beyond these elections and hopefully it will last until the end of the term of the president. What's fascinating here is that interplay between the personalities and the platforms. Um, let's just look at the performance on, ha on uh, Proclamation Day rally of all of it. We looked at, at what happened on social media and one of the interesting things we saw was that the social networks, the community of both political parties is actually identical. There's only one community for both political parties. I mean, you can look at that two, two ways. One is that, you know, they have the same people supporting them, which can make sense if, if since they're both parts of, of government. But then the flip side of that is it shows how weak our political party yes. system is, actually. How, how would you react to that? I'll, I, I'll show you the maps later on. Yeah, it would probably show that we're, we're all running in a small yard with very little participants. And, uh, um, well, obviously also there, there, there has to be a... In, in the overall market of, of the uh, social media, obviously this is one aspect that, I mean, any democracy needs participants. Yes. Uh, a democracy can only be vibrant if there are more individuals that take part in it. And social media is, it's not, it's not just new, but obviously it's the most innovative because there's an immediate participation. Mm -hmm. When somebody says something, it, there is a, a method through which that me message reaches the person concerned. Right. And we need to be able to actually involve individuals. And maybe it also comes out from the fact that there's, there's always been that growing, not growing, but built-in cynicism among individuals who take part in those social media right. who've always had uh, this cynicism with government and politics, which I don't really blame them for having. And that is my observation. And the reason yes. why... Well, what's interesting about that observation is when we were watching the rally, right, you were on a stage speaking to an audience that is largely masa. Yes. Uh, and then social media is largely up, upscale. This is not yes. your DE. So in many ways, the candidates are having to deal with both DE and ABC1C2 audience. How will any of this affect the way you campaign? Yes, it does. Uh, uh, you know, for the longest time, I think social media has been dismissed by a number of campaigns, but we've seen how social media, more importantly, if you don't address it well, can destroy you. Mm -hmm. 
I think the the power it, it's it, it's not to denigrate the 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 medium. Yes. But if it's something that you completely ignore, uh, I think it's something that you will live to regret. I mean, if you will live to regret. Yeah. But it's important for us that we be able to access this because individuals who actually take part in the social media are the movers of the economy. They're the individuals who put in money. They're the individuals um, on, on which many of our investors actually rely on, right. meaning these are open things. Many of the investors who would want to participate in, in our economy, the only thing they can really, really rely on directly are, are these things. And we need to involve uh, these individuals. Mm -hmm. But it's challenging. I mean, challenging because politics is, uh, like I said, they have, even in the local level, even in a small area, the rich people or the educated people has always had that cynicism. Even, even with or without social media, there seems to be that natural barrier, yes. which we all have to overcome. And I think social media allows it because what, what people in the AB class uh, or even the educated don't like is we always like we always feel like you know it's useless to talk about government anyway they're not going to listen mm -hmm. we know what happens we know what the solutions are but it's useless so so why will we participate but I think if there's a flow of information as well as a genuine exchange where you can listen and yeah. separate the shaft from the grain I think that medium is is absolutely a great potential for having a more vibrant democracy if you're looking at the 2013 elections as a referendum on the president, what will make this different? I mean, are you going to, you're a young politician, is there a different way of attacking campaigns and the whole electoral process in 2013? I'm still not used to being called a politician. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> but I am not, I am. <laughs> anyway. You are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's always been a uh, <laughs> derogatory statement <laughs> when I was growing up anyway. But uh, it, it's different. We're trying to elevate it as much as we can. Okay. We strongly believe. You know, people may find it hard to believe, but we're trying to elevate the debate on, on accountability, meaning do you believe the president has done well in terms of educational reform? Do you think the president has done well in terms of transparency? Do you think the president has done well in the economy? Do you think he has done well in job generation? Do you think that, uh, can you trust the president enough to give him another three years with a group of people that will be supportive of him? Not, not individuals he can dictate on. I mean, yes. look at the guys in our, in our slate. You have Senator Chisis Codero, I yes. mean, Senator Trillianes. <laughs> I don't think, he, I don't think uh, even the mother of Senator Trillianes can dictate on him. <laughs> I mean, no one intended. But, right, right. But obviously, it is that. It yes. is the first time that we would like to put all the marbles on the table. We want the people to decide on that basis. And in the last three weeks, we've, they've refused. UNA has refused to talk about programs. The, all that they've been doing is really sending brick bats about the three candidates, about the individual uh, persons involved with Team Pinoy, but they have not addressed any alternative programs or any al alternative agenda on, they just keep saying that, you know, to the done is not enough. People are still hungry, people yes. are still without jobs. But what is the alternative? Right. Do they say that the improvement, improvement is not forthcoming? We, we expect and we will pursue that. And, and we strongly are convinced that if we carry out a, a message-oriented campaign, we are going to be able to bring in even the lowest ranking among our senatorials. 